The Serbians have officially entered the group chat. Jannard is cooking in his plan to overthrow Diamond. And Walter Flynn has no idea about the coup that's about to happen within his organization. What's good, y'all? It's your good sis, Erica Payne, coming to you right here on Erica Payne TV with another Power Book 4 Force video. In this video, we are breaking down episode four from season one in its entirety. A lot happened in this episode, as well as so many Easter eggs being laid and some things from before getting paid off or getting a little bit more context. So we're gonna talk about it. If you wanna dive into episode four, catch what you miss and more, then keep watching. The episode opens on Tommy and Gloria who have seemingly been banging like rabbits and you know what y'all both deserve so go for it they seem to have amazing sexual chemistry while this still seems very fun not a relationship or anything yet they just seem to work they get each other they vibe it's really cool to see Tommy in a place with his hair let down a little bit and just enjoying himself because he is you know still recovering from all of the grief of the loss coming to Chicago to try to start over feeling like he has nobody and now seemingly being thrown into the midst of a possible empire that he can build a new family with his brother and a new brother with diamond as he continues to build and get to know him so like i said tommy you deserve go ahead and bang that back out bro it's, it's all good now glory on the other hand i still want him to keep his head on the swivel when it comes to sis because i don't know what it is but something tells me that she is a lot more than what meets the eye what y'all think y'all got questions theories predictions about gloria drop them in the comment section down below now from there we get to see Jannar and elijah going into the barbershop diamond isn't there yet and they're talking basically about this coup that Jannar is staging like he basically alluded to last episode that he let diamond beat him so that he could better position himself to take over the organization and by the time that he's done nobody's gonna be picking a side everybody's gonna be picking him it's not gonna be you know split down the middle like elijah is saying and i just Jannard is really confusing me because while I get the seemingly annoyance with being the younger brother who now has to turn over the ranks back to the big brother and you feel like you gave up your life and you created this organization you spent 15 years building it building it to what because y'all are still running around Chicago shooting up people doing all types of stuff that's too wild that's too crazy that's drawing too much attention y'all have money but clearly you haven't surpassed the, the Flynn's or really made any waves in that regard the only thing that you've done is made sure that the cbi didn't become another like another one of the crews who just kind of like is infighting and and or has disappeared other than that you really have yes kept y'all afloat but like what's the vision for the future what i struggle with with Janara's character it's like it's one thing if you think that you're the best leader to lead the organization to new heights to new levels into the future okay cool but it seems like he just wants to hold the crown just so he can hold the crown he don't really have no plans for what they're going to do next he he literally seems drunk with power and ego and wanting to make sure his brother knows that he ain't little bro no more but bro you gonna forever be little bro so like you're fighting this uphill battle that your ass is never gonna win and i'm really not even clear of what the victory actually is for you or what it would mean because ultimately you can be the king of ashes you can be the king of, you know, a big pile of doo-doo if you want, because that's what's going to wind up happening. I think Jannard pursuing the, the the lead spot while Diamond is still alive and well and wanting to do this thing will wind up tearing the whole CBI organization down. And if he's doing all that just so that he can sit at the top of this whole torn up organization, then sir, you might as well quit, quit while you ahead. Now we did get a little bit further context in the scene because we get to hear that Jannar gave up college and he really sacrificed a lot just to be able to step in and keep things afloat when his brother went away. And it's like, okay, well he's back now. You could, if you really want to go to college that bad, you crying about it, go to college, bro. Like there are things that you can still go do if you want to go do them. And it's one thing to make a sacrifice face and completely not want to do it and then have a vendetta about that but i feel like also which we don't actually get to see this but i feel like Jannar is the type of person that he he made that sacrifice because he wanted to because he felt like that was the best thing for him or because he needs attention and he liked the idea of being a leader of something so while he's holding this big ass grudge about how he had to give up his life so that he could go ahead and run the cbi organization i don't think that he did it for the organization i think he did it for his own ego so then that goes back to the point of like sir who are you what are you really crying about because ultimately this is what you wanted to do i feel like Jannar is in the middle of a of, of or like at least starting an identity crisis and i don't want to see it because it's annoying the hell out of me and my homegirls 
And Elijah, I really want him to pick a side. It seems like he picked Jannard's side, but he also seems like he's a very loyal soldier and loyal to the previous World Order. And if not anything, definitely still loyal to Diamond. And he's threatened this line very, very, very closely because while he reassures Jannard that he's on his side, he's on his side, he's on his side, you know, later on in the episode, he does tip Diamond off that the police are going to be at the location that he goes to that Jannard had no idea about. So it also made me wonder like, yo, how did you even know? Even though, of course, they listen to the police scanners for their own things, but how did you even know that Diamond was there? But he tips him off so that he can get out of there. And I'm like, well, if you were really just for Jannard one, if you really wanted Diamond out the way, that's the quickest way to do it. Send him back to jail or let him send himself back to jail by not telling him that the police are about to be at this place with the Yardies. And yeah, just one, no two points for that. Like instead of continuing this little random coup or if you plan to beat his ass or kill him because ultimately while they were sitting up there talking, it really seemed like they were dancing around the idea of like, it's not one, it's not gonna be easy to take Diamond off of the throne now that he's back on. And it seems like one of the only ways to do so is to kill him or send him back to jail. So y'all had the opportunity in this episode to let him go back to jail and you didn't. So you gonna try to kill him? Now I ain't say that they said that y'all, but I'm just looking at the options that's on the table. Now we get a little bit also from DMAC in this episode. He walks in while Jannard and Elijah is talking and y'all, this is JP son. Y'all, it is very clear to me that he knows that JP is his dad, but JP does not recognize his son. And child, if this is not getting even more messy by the moment, JP's windows get fixed and then DMAC brings his homeboy back. He like, yeah, we about to just go ahead and mess some stuff up. And the boy's like, yo, let's just rob it. Like, like if we're gonna tap the place, like let's make sure we also get some money out of him. He's like, no, we're not gonna rob them. We just wanna mess up the stuff. And he, the homeboy can't figure out why. But in the midst of them talking, JP comes out with his bat, like, all right, what it is, what it ain't. And DMAT is pretty much stunned right in place. The boy, uh, the other little friend runs off and JP is just literally treating him like he's a thug on the street. Meanwhile, you can see it all over D Max face of like, yo, this is my father, say something, say something. He's like, why are you doing this to me? Why you keep harassing me? Why you keep coming after my club? And D Max can't say nothing, then ultimately turns and run, runs away. <sighs> I'm like, Lord, please don't let them bring this thing down. Cause you can just see all of the hurt over D Max face. I just want him to be like, I'm your son. So we can go ahead and get it over with, but clearly that ain't happened. But before we even get back into, before I stop talking about D Max actually, because when he comes comes into the barber shop he is like all right what you need me to do he's basically like a little young wild boy right and he's down for whatever janard tells him to get a bunch of young boys together and this is a part of janard's plan to try to usurp diamond and i'm just like yo if you finna hinge your plan on a bunch of little d mats you deserve to be number two dummy this is not gonna work no offense d mat but you just a little angry little boy with a gun. You don't have no clear head. You supposed to go round up all the little smart boys and you ain't really even give a smart either. So again, Jannar, quit while you ahead, bro. And you're not even ahead. Now the deal that goes wrong for Tommy in this episode is the deal that, or the, the takeover. It's not actually a deal. It's a, I'm coming in, I'm gonna take this because y'all know what the hell y'all doing anyway. And I'm, I'm, I'm in town and this is it with the Yardies basically. And he, you know, meets with Diamond and then Diamond also allows for Vic to come in. Basically these guys get on the same page in this episode. I absolutely love the Donna scene, especially with the older black man that wound up checking Tommy about just ordering coffee and it's like basically paying hom like paying homage to diamond like yo you sitting with the champ you talking about coffee dude this look like starbucks you better order something uh <laughs> give it all that chicago og flavor i absolutely adored it it gave comedic relief it just set the stage for where we're at it really humanized everybody a little bit vic and tommy are working together and going to be working together for the foreseeable future so much so that tommy decides to stop banging gloria because of it because at the end of the day vic tries some little passive aggressive attempt to get Tommy to come to the bar which ultimately allows for them to have a conversation about how Vic knows that he's smashing Gloria and Vic knows that it is a temporary thing and he don't want to have to worry about Tommy killing him behind this this girl yada 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 it was a very mature conversation that I wasn't actually expecting and Vic this just tells me how much you are not ready for a woman like Gloria because the fact that you are so willing and able like one thing I'm like okay cool you gonna give her space but don't be like it's temporary don't be like y'all a break y'all are like literally not together and want her to be happy so like keep your distance and be able to work with tommy because you want her to be happy and you have let her go 
not because you're so easily able to fall to the background and play passive and wait your turn like that is giving very goofy that's giving no nobody's vaginas getting wet for that man and yeah no mm -mm. now for tommy he has yet to fall in love with glory so it's easy for him to be like you know what business comes first but vic you are very much so in love with her so the way that you're moving bro it's giving very much so coward it's giving very much so you'll let the big bully not to say that tommy's a bully y'all but you'll let the big bully in school take whatever he wants from you just so that you could kind of keep the peace and keep your little pretty face and again nobody's vagina is getting wet for that bro now back to the yardies basically the yardies were also a part of some little sting that's happening with the police so the same time that diamond tommy and vic show up to let the yardies leaders of their organization know that they are done in their territory the east side is definitely tommy's now and they finna divide it up the police show up like shortly after elijah is able to get a call off to diamond to let him know to get out of there and then we also get to see that little random crooked cop who's on vic's payroll ride by he's a part of the organization that's chasing them so that whole thing becomes a dud which they ultimately still gonna wind up taking over the territory now they just get to do it without letting them know it might be a little bit of blowback on the street but they gonna wind up having to do it any daggone way and honestly y'all that's one of my favorite parts of this episode was watching the three of them even though i do not like vic watching the three of them move throughout the city it it was definitely giving like reminiscent to power vibes and like the new trifecta forming and the power forming i'm like all right i see what y'all doing here i absolutely love diamond and tommy working together and vic he ain't that bad like if he gonna bring in the fin family and like have us not have to deal with no bs when it comes to certain white folks within these organizations then you know vic can tag along or whatever now walter flynn gets word of like what goes on and he actually pops up on tommy leaving the bar talking to, to gloria he's like i don't know what you get my son into but this ain't gonna work out yada 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 walter you have lost the reign sir and while you keep coming to this renegade this rogue that you call tommy you need to go ahead and check your kids inside your organization because clearly that is where you have the most control if any and that's the only thing that you're going to be able to do because Tommy don't give a damn what you're saying and neither do we and just as we expected y'all the people who Liliana stole them drugs for has come for and it is the Serbian network bruh I thought sis might have been gone I thought she was out of here y'all they had her they had her for a minute Tommy ultimately has to step in to save her from her little Serbian abductors. She sends a brilliant text message looping ghosts into it that lets Tommy know that there's danger, there's something going on, and he shows up to help her take care of the two guys that's holding her, who basically they want their drugs. And this confirms the Serbian organization's presence in Chicago. And mind you, the moment that they realize that Tommy is attached to her or here she becomes less of importance because tommy is tied to the death of jason tommy well and of course ghosts <laughs> are tied to the death of jason tommy you know has come to chicago has ex has certain experiences here just they care more about him now than they do about you know $300,000 worth of products. And because of this, they have to continue to, or they have to figure out a play and then confront the leader, Tatiana, towards the end of the episode. Now, while Tommy is trying to figure out what he's going to do next, and he's, you know, working with Diamond or trying to get Diamond to come in to help him take out the Serbian presence that's going to ultimately be looking for him and be coming to find him if he doesn't actually, you know, make some shake at this meet. Diamond goes goes ahead and lets him know, yeah, I'm gonna sit this one out. And I think part of it is like he does want to help Tommy. However, this does feel like he's going up against a monster that he's not gonna come back from. And then he also, I think Diamond still has his head on the swivel when it comes to Jannar, and he is keeping that in mind. So if he comes back to Jannar, like, yeah, we about to go up against the Serbians, that's gonna in like really ignite something within their organization that's going to speed up this coming coup any dang way so i think part of the reason why diamond goes ahead and says nah i ain't gonna be able to do it 
is because of that. Which gets Tommy to call in his other little pal, you know, his little his little homie adjacent, I suppose. He does the meet with the Serbians, winds up taking up two uh taking out two of Tatiana's little henchmen before he has to take out Tatiana because Vic helps him out. Coming in eleventh hour, like bam, got your back. Which is really cool. It lets us know that Vic is really serious about working with Tommy because in this moment he literally could kill Tommy and make another connect with the Serbians for doing it and like flip on him but he doesn't so this lets us know like yeah Vic is actually in he's actually going to you know be working with Tommy at least for the foreseeable future and for right now they're friends not foes now I don't think that this is it when it comes to the Serbians this is just them taking out middle management I think now they have called in the big boss now that he didn't drop Tatiana right here and that's going to be how to pay coming soon. Episode five is next week. So typically around the mid-season finale, we get a very explosive type of episode. And I don't expect anything less for next week's episode before we probably take a week or two week break and then and then finish out the rest of season one. I absolutely love this episode. So much happened. While all this is going on with Tommy, Vic, and Diamond, Tommy early on in the episode puts Liliana on following Claudia, who is going around and trying to show up her network for this new drug so she is meeting with people doing basically like pre-sales they have to wind up calling in the chemist who actually worked on it who actually left the project and now claudia blackmails her into coming back on board because of some crazy stuff that she did with the labs and the testing and the government or whatever ultimately she gonna wind up losing her license if any of the things that she did while working on the drug while it was illegal a drug that they were doing for like weight loss or something if any of that kind of stuff came out she would wind up losing her license so claudia Claudia winds up blackmailing her into coming back on board to work with them. We get a little moment also with Claudia and Mai. And Mai's like, yo, I'm just trying to figure out if I'm working with the right Flynn. So this won't be easy. While this drug seems like a slam dunk, it won't be easy getting everything off the ground, especially because Claudia is trying to do everything behind her father's back. And the moment that it gets out that this new drug is taking over and has hit the streets, they're not going to be able to keep it quiet for long. So I'm very curious as to see what Claudia's or her game plan is going to be because she's already making enemies like you're going to have your chemist working for you and they don't actually want to work for you because you blackmailing her my thinks that you're you know giving all these orders and doing all this bullshit but y'all supposed to be partners so she's literally not necessarily creating enemies that's going to come for her immediately but she also is creating a little bit of resentment as she's building this up and i'm just like sis for you to be going against your family doing this alone and then also starting to piss off the people that you're working with are you trying to set yourself up for something Somebody to kill you because all it takes is one bad batch of this drug honey <laughs> the chemist could go ahead and handle you real quick and then another thing that happens in the episode y'all that i want to mention it's a smaller thing but i think it's going to be a bigger threat later later on and it's going to lead to kate actually coming into the series i think but tommy sits down with jp and his dad and jp's dad got all this attitude he is not trying to see kate's other little son little white son at that because kate walked away from her son or his son with her and they kicking it they talking he giving all types of attitude i think he can actually feel that tommy's a real dude though so i could see them actually getting to a better place moving forward he's just very protective of his son jp and i really love the scene because it kind of created a moment of family and i think that that's one thing that tommy is really looking forward to like he's really looking for a new family he had that with the saint patrick's and now after all that has gone down he doesn't he don't even have his mom to be able to go to and now with you know finding jp and then meeting his father it's creating a little family dynamic and tommy always like seems to gravitate towards that like at the end of the day tommy's a g he's a gangster he bought his money but he also wants to be loved like for real for real and i love to see it all right y'all that's my breakdown for episode four from season one power book four force if you're new here hit that subscribe button and turn your bell notifications so that you don't miss out on any of my power book four force videos let me know all your thoughts theories and predictions in the comment section down below did i miss anything let me know that in the comment section down below i will be replying to every last one of y'all's comments i can't wait to do so and be on the lookout for my preview and predictions for next week's episode as well as we're going to be talking about the serbians and gloria and vic this week until then, see you in the next one.